do it. Mm-hmm. And we are back, going out to the tens of people listening on YouTube and Spotify, The Vacuous Perspective, with uh, me, Val, and uh, Nate. We're back. We're in the tens now, are we? Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, but- <laughs> Can we go with that? Can we say tens? Yeah, oh, let's Maybe do ten. It. Can we go 10? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Going out to the 10 people. I don't know if this is good news or bad news, but I didn't think it was possible to do less work for this show than I do. Right. On a week to week basis. Yes. But I'm proud to report that I've done absolutely nothing. Again. Well, sometimes I do something. This time I've done nothing. Right. Well, that should be fine. But I do have something from a few weeks ago that interests me. Uh huh. Uh huh. It actually brings me to my first point of the the uh, the night. Oh, if you've got something, please. The first point of the night is um, I've been noticing a bit lately that we've been uh, repeating ourselves, not just repeating ourselves on topics here and there, Shh. but like entire. Don't tell anyone. Well, don't tell anyone. I'm, I'm, I'm letting the cat out of the bag. Mm-hmm. Entire conversations which have weird connections and weird uh linkages but they all came in that same sequence before and i'm talking about the chat we had last week about trials hd and what dreams may come the robin williams movie two very obscure things you'd agree yeah linkage no linkage between the robin williams movie and a motocross game on the xbox none at all but I'm pretty sure, and uh, the internet sleuths will will solve this in the distant future, that we had that exact conversation. And I <laughs> really? re- re- yeah, and <laughs> I recognize that I repeat myself quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got uh, a lot of content. Story- no, well, no, we don't. Hey, no, no, but wait, wait. Don't, wait well, I you do, do you might. Clarification. You might. What's the movie called again? What What was it? The, I'm trying what to find it. Dreams what the Robin- May Come. Mm. So- We've talked about that movie before. Yes. How do you know? Did someone point this out to you? No. So you just like woke up one day and you're like, hey, we had that conversation before. Yeah, but because it happens all the time to me, I can – the problem with repeating things, stories, ideas, anything like that is you don't know who you've told. Yeah. After after a certain amount of time, you can't remember who you've told. And when you tell the pod, when you put it on the pod – you're telling everyone, at, well, the tens, and you're committing it to like digital memory. It's better than ours. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly that what we me. said. That scares me because all these things can come up again and they, they, they can they haunt will. you. Yeah, they, they will. will. They, they will. will. <gasps> That's why I'm prefacing it by talking about this now, trying to exercise the demons a bit. I was um on a, I don't know if you'd call it a date, but I was out with a friend and – I told her about the application that I'm developing about talking to animals. Uh, which you didn't tell the, her the, the technical details though, did you? We very, very quickly brushed over the technical spec, yeah? It's more about the fundamentals, the idea of it. And the idea of it is is that you'll be able to talk to animals and a lot of uh, uh, strange conversations will happen because of it. We're going to chat to the geese. We're going to chat to the horses. We're going to chat to the cows. We're going to chat to our own animals, our pets. Yeah, just our the way Google ones. Translate works now, but for yeah, animals. Yeah. Animals. And uh, I had JetGPT actually whip this up for me today. Um, cre- yeah, creating a technology to facilitate communications with animals through a phone app, right? Concept. They've even given me a name, Anim, Anim Talk. It's not very creative. Mm, yeah, Anim good. Talk is a revolutionary technology designed to interpret and communicate with animals using a combination of advanced machine learning bioacoustics and behavioral analysis so it gives me these key components right and i'd thought Mm. of a few of them but i like the fact that even in this hypothetically dumb sitch where we're we're talking about a phone app that can talk to animals or allow us communication with animals and i want real communication i want to be able to talk to it and it talk to me right that's what i want yeah you want want real conversations so here's the key components of this fake product that doesn't exist Animal biosensors. The devices. The device incorporates biosensors capable of capturing a vial, a variety of physiological and behavioral data from animals, including heart rate, body temp, and vocalizations. Boom. That's important, right? 
Okay, so um, heart rate, interesting. So it's more, it's not just taking language, it's taking body language. And physiology. Physiology. Uh, mm. Body temp, vocalizations. This is all just one key component that we're talking about here. Number two, bioacoustic analysis. Sounds good, doesn't it? Is that a real thing? Well, we're, yes. Bioacoustic analysis. Utilizing advanced up. algorithms to analyze the unique vocalizations of different species. The app can recognize patterns and associate them with specific emotions, needs, or commands. So, another big tick for the fake product. Okay. Yeah. So, this is like the pitch. This is, yeah. This is, this is, yeah, this okay. is the whole, the, yeah, absolutely. Three, behavioral analysis. Great. We love that. That's what we're already talking about. Translation algorithms, it converts the analyzed data into a human understandable format. For example, it may translate a dog's barking pattern into phrases like, I'm hungry, I'm lonely, or I need to go for a walk. Okay, so when Luff is sitting there yes. with a boner, he looks yes. really... He looks very passive. Like I said, there's going to be some really uncomfortable communicate. There's yeah, I wonder what he's thinking. Chance. So here he is now. Yes. Yeah. And when I've got the food bowl and I'm walking yes. towards his food area, yeah. he just spins. There's like a tornado just round and round and around. Yeah. What do you think the the app would be? What is he saying? What is he trying to communicate? It could be as simple as hell yeah. It could be as complex as thank you so much, uh, food lords for another meal. I'm so grateful. I'm going to do the spinnies of appreciation in celebration of the food being delivered. You know, it could be anything. Mm. Sky's the limit. Two-way communication, this is something I touched on earlier, allows users to communicate with animals through the app. Users can input commands or messages which are translated into signals that animals can understand. This could be in the form of specific sounds or vibrations emitted by the device. I want to take it a step further. Let's just put chips in our heads. Right, chips in the heads done. Definitely, this yeah. is where I was, I was just thinking that yeah, bioacoustics, biosensors, all this bu bullshit. What we just need to do is convert mm. the electrical signals of their brain Ooh, directly. That. Is their that thoughts? Fair? Is that ethical? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, is that ethical? That's what we're going to be doing soon. My thoughts going mm. straight to you. I won't be able to lie. I won't Oof. be able to do any of that. It's just going to be Oof. direct, raw Oof. electrical data. No, not Converted interested. Converted by the computers. Not interested in knowing every all the dog's thoughts. Yeah? Just interested in being able to have a chat. A two-way conversation. Two-way communication. Absolutely. Last you, point on the yeah. key, key mm -hmm. components is yep. learning and adaptation. So this is an ongoing, continually learning, super uh, learning computer like Terminator. Like the, T, like the TX. Um, okay. Over time, it refines its understanding of the pet or wildlife's preferences and needs. Wow. Well, yeah, okay, so that's just AI I know, tuning, and, dialing it in. It's so good though, man, because when it then lists the potential use cases, this is the interesting part, right? The technology is great. What's the application or what is chat GPT better what, is, what does ChatGPT think the potential uses are? Because I know what my my uh, my angle is. My angle is pet communication. Um, eth the ethics involved in farming, wildlife conservation, animal rescue. The these are your applications. That's what I would think of. Yeah, okay. Yeah. These are these are the things that I would think about. These are my these are my priorities. What about world domination? Well, yeah. If you can get the animals working collectively. Oh, mate. Get all the termites on Earth, start doing some damage. That's, yeah. yeah, termites, get all the ants working. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen it? Collectively. I haven't. I've seen the honest trailer. <laughs> That's all I need to see. They do talk to ants, I'm pretty sure, in that movie show. Uh, the concept of, yeah, they do talk to ants in that. There is communication. So okay, ChatGPT yes, spat yeah. out some potential use cases. Number one, pet communication. Understand and respond to your pet's needs, emotions, and desires. 
Oh, that might freak. That might worry me though, because mate, it's better really... than not knowing. Imagine if you had the ability to know and then you avoided it. You can't do that. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. But once the technology exists, you can't ethically do that. <laughs> True. Unless you the want to AI take care is... of your pet, you love it. You of love course, Luff. of course. If oh, of Luff course. said, "I've got some serious concerns about my living arrangements," he'd listen to him with a, with an honest ear, especially if it was the first time he got to a, to tell you these concerns. And you know. He is a spoiled child, though. Well, then that conversation can happen again. These are all these uncomfortable chats that we're going to have with mm. our animals of the yeah, future. Okay. Okay. But it's, not, it's only going to be for a couple of gens till it's the norm. So they get rights the same as humans then? Um, well, they have animal rights. Animals have rights. We're going to have to elevate those, though, if Absolutely. we can communicate with them. Yeah. Absolutely. This is what I'm saying about the potential um, case for it to hit business because if we ask the geese if they're okay with having shit jammed down their throats to give them a bad liver so that we can eat it, um, if they're not having a good time, then we need to help it, help help them. All right, anyway, that the reason I was bringing mm. all that up mm. is because – I told this uh, this friend that about the app, and they said that I that I, that I've already told them about the app. Yeah, you've been telling me about the app for a while. This is what I mean. Yeah, but I I mentioned I would have brought it up to her as a new idea a multiple times, right? And okay. I said, is it three or four times that I've brought it up? You know, because I if this is number two, I'd be surprised if it's two. You know what I mean? I've probably yeah. already done that. I've told you this before, haven't I? Chat. So therefore, my point is we got nothing. Like I'm drawing on the app. I'm going back to the app well. Not well, in the show, but in just regular life. Yeah, okay. Look, I often I know with some of my friends, I tell them and I've told them a, I tell them a story and they say, yes. "Yeah, man, like you've told me this you told me this before. And yeah. one of them says he's nice enough not to let me know. He just goes, I just listened to it again. But he t- tells you that, he listened, that he's heard it but that he didn't do it while you were telling it. Yeah, yeah. He says he does that quite – no, not regularly, but he says he just lets me go. I'm having a good time. I th- if, if he's you a good also, friend. If, yeah, that's really nice, first of all. But if you're also one of those people that forget stuff and that's why you're being forgiving of people for forgetting stuff, then – you know, you could always say, "Hey, I'll do this as well," but you know, I told you, you've told you this before. Well, but I've got I'm a pretty. Gu- I blame him a little bit because I've got a pretty oh, wide range good. of interests. So he obviously corralled oh. me down this path. He was probably talking to me about the oh. same kind of thing, and it forced my hand into yeah. my story. It's just as natural as going from Trials HD to a Robin Williams movie about hell. It's about the same. Let's not do it again, though. Well. No, but let's uh, let's just continue as normal, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> I did. I got ChatGPT to do some other work for me as well. Um, oh, you're getting it to do work now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just was curious as to see where we're at because I view AI as a constantly evolving space, and it's constantly learning all the time. Terrifying. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, What's it learning now? I tried to. You, you know. You know me. I like to see if it can get creative. Mm. Mm. True I want to see what it can yeah. do. Yeah. In terms of like uh, creating something from stra- scratch that's enjoyable, right? You want so original I works. Thought yeah. I would ask it to be funny. In the past, I've asked it to write um, screenplays for. Lord of the Rings, but the ring was a bowl of soup or something. I've done it to do that, right? But that's not inherently f- meant to be funny. That's just it trying to do a story. I wanted to see if it could try and be funny. Yeah. I think I asked it to write a stand-up routine about about working, about work. The problem with a stand-up routine. Yes. It's all about delivery. Agreed. I'll do it's my a, best. It's a bit like when you read lyrics. Yeah, they sound oh, no. terrible. They need the context, the delivery. The, there's a lot else that oh, goes knows? on. You might be the body surprised. language. Yeah. Okay. Stand up routine. Okay. I'll try and I'll try and uh, punctuate it appropriately. I'm going to leave out the first bit. 
I'm going to tell you it anyway. But ladies and gentlemen, how's everyone doing tonight? Yeah. Oh, good. Awesome. Yeah. Let me tell you about this daily grind, the nine to five, the reason we set our alarms in the morning, going to work every day, right? You know you're an adult when the sound of your alarm clock is more terrifying than any horror movie you've ever seen. That thing blares in your ear and you're lying there contemplating whether it's worth risking your job just to hit the snooze button one more time. Spoiler alert, it isn't, right? And then there's the morning routine. I don't know about you, but I've got a morning routine that's basically a science. It's a delicate balance of hitting the snooze button exactly three times, rushing to get dressed like I'm in a time trial, and staring into the abyss of my coffee mug, hoping it will magically grant me energy. Any of this landing? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Speaking of coffee, can we talk about the office coffee for a second? I don't know where they get it from, but I'm pretty sure it's the same place they brew rocket fuel. (laughs) (laughs) You take one sip and suddenly you're ready to launch into the day with the speed and intensity of a caffeinated cheetah. It's like liquid motivation, and I'm here for it. Now the commute. If there's one thing that unites us all, it's the joy of rush hour traffic, not so much people on public transport. Uh, for Nate here. You're sitting there, bumper to bumper, contemplating whether it's socially acceptable to eat your breakfast burrito with the same hand you used to steer. It's a skill, really. Should be viewed that way. There's still a bit more. It's so mundane. It's Yeah, it's yeah just but I, I did through. ask it to write about the one thing that is pretty mundane, hoping it could pull out something. Um, yeah. And let's not forget the glamorous world of office attire, business Mm. casual, the fashion equivalent of not too hot, not too cold, just right. What the fuck does that mean? It almost almost sounds like a George Carlin bit, but he'd say something like, the fashion equivalent of fucking being a stupid fuckhead, like he'd do that. (laughs) But what does business casual even mean? Is it business with a hint of party or is it casual with a dash of professionalism? Wow. I have these thoughts. And meetings. Don't even get me started on meetings. They're like a game of corporate bingo. You sit there, you nod your head, you pretend (sighs) to understand all the acronyms and jargon that's flying around the room. I swear, I spend half my meetings trying to decode what my boss is even saying. But hey, despite the chaos and the occasional existential crisis in the office bathroom, going to work every day has its perks. Like the satisfaction of crossing things off your to-do list, the joy of payday and the sweet, sweet victory of successfully fixing the office printer. It's the... I had that today. Yeah, I did it for (laughs) someone else. Someone else had the printer problem. I just walked past. Just, you know, I was in there opening chambers, opening compartments. She was relatively new. I'm whipping out papers. I don't know how she got that many papers stuck in the first place. Yeah. Close that bad boy up and she was very thankful. Magician. You're a magician. Okay, let me run this by very quick. Is that the is that the standard? Oh, yeah. Routine? Oh, sorry. This is the, this is the end. This is the end. Please. In conclusion, mm. going to work every day is a wild ride. It's a roller coaster of emotions, a journey filled with coffee, awkward small talk, and the eternal quest for the perfect work life balance. So here's to all of us, the everyday warriors. Navigating the cubicles and conferences rooms, the conference rooms of life. May your coffee be strong, your meetings be short, and your commute be traffic free. That's wow. a good ending. It's actually it's a, a nice decent message. Ending. Nice message, yeah. The wild ride references start I don't know about getting that. My, my juices flowing. Oh, really? No, oh, because it sounds like uh, the, the, the bit by, uh, who is it, does the wild ride? Oh, oh no, right. that's the uh, that, that's the it's just a ride. It's that's just a, a ride. One. Yeah, the Bill Hicks. Hicks. Oh yeah, man, Hicks. we should post that. Post a link to that. Yeah, it's a goodie, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a, a bit, really good. It's a bit um, fanciful. I've heard it be called uh, later, but I like fanciful. Perhaps I liked it. <laughs> I did like it, and the meetings resonate with me a lot. I've been in a lot of meetings, particularly last week, yes. and it felt like they were actually with government agencies, and they. It's like Utopia with that yes. Rob Sitch yes. series, the Australian. Often people say like it's not sent up hard enough. 
I think he meets people who work in government or work in big business or whatever, and they say, uh, I don't know where you're getting like all your material from, but it's um, it is like that and sometimes worse. One hundred percent. Oh, I can't believe it. The other day we were in a meeting, and this guy's saying we need to sit down and have a meeting about what this means. Like we yes. need to actually have a sit down and talk about what this means. Great. I'm looking at him. I'm like, oh, all right. Do you want to talk about it? No, let's, no. Let's, we're all, time. let's do it. Let's do it. We're all no, we're here. we're going to call a meeting. No, we're going to call a meeting. Call Had a meeting. meeting. First thing on the agenda was discussing when we're going to meet for the next meeting. Right. Have another meeting. I'm like, man, we haven't even done anything. We haven't talked about anything. But we already need another one. And you set it up. I'm like, wait, let's let's see if we can deal with it now. Yes. And if we can't, if we don't, let's set up. Let's set up as many meetings as we want. Let's set up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They just talk about meetings. Nothing actually gets done. They go, oh, we're gonna have to. Okay, we're gonna have to break into small groups to, to, to. Yeah, that's how we'll deal with this problem. We need less people. And I'm like, why did we have so many people to begin with? Why are we meeting? (laughs) (laughs) Nothing gets done. Yeah. Oh, uh, but you know, this is how it works. This is how it works. Okay, let me run this one by you. You're talking about work. Yeah. Let, let me paint a scenario to you that um, my wife experienced the other day. Yeah, so sure. she goes into the toilet, mm. opens the door, lifts the lid, massive floater. Yes. Ginormous floater. Yes. Okay. She messages that she just it's too much for her to deal with. She's quite new at her job, so she just closes the lid, moves on to the next one, right? She's like, This isn't my problem to deal with. I don't know what to, I don't know why you don't just flush it, but maybe it took her by surprise. I don't know. She's just sort of panicked, went to another one. And maybe she didn't lift up the lid. Maybe she just spotted it from afar. So you don't even need to go in there. You just go, yeah. mm, that's not for me. Yep. Yeah, different one, please. Goes in the next toilet. Um, I don't know if it's at that moment or she messages her friend, but she's like, oh, there's a bit of a, you know, it's a pretty serious situation going on in here. And her friend says, I don't know how, why, I don't, this is my understanding. She says, is there any toilet paper? She has a look. There's no toilet paper in there. Right. It's a floater with no toilet paper in the bowl and there's no toilet paper Next door. So what? What's the, the only logical scenario I can play out in my head? Yes. Is someone's just dropped yes. a massive drop their guts, mm. realized there's no toilet paper, and just made a run for it. But didn't flush. No, no time for flushing. I think they panicked. Wow. What? What else? How could you know piece piece together the situation for me? I don't really know how. It's a, it's a catastrophe for starters. I feel sorry for them. Yes. It's a nightmare. We've all been there. Yeah, we have. Uh, and toilets are weird things. I'm not a plumber. I'm not a toilet expert. But toilets are strange beasts. Plumbing's incredible. I know we've talked about this. It's just water Lego. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he says it's That's water Lego. That's a super hands line. He's like, plumbing's not... <laughs> Plumbing's not uh, complicated. It's just water Lego, isn't it? It's it's unbelievably. I, I, oh, I don't yeah, understand. I don't understand how the levels up, work. You know, oh, it's incredible. You're big enough, but it's not. I struggle to the. I, I struggle to decide whether electricity, like the mm. setup for mm. electricity infrastructure in mm. a building for electricity, is more sophisticated or impressive than the plumbing. I think the plumbing's incredible. I think that's fair. Because electricity is sort of a little bit abstract in its concept. It's just running through wires. There's no real, there's nothing, there's no weight to it. It's all magic. Whereas plumbing, you know, there's, there's turds, there's water, there's yes. actually physical stuff moving around. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Big floaters. Um, you know the phantom poos? They're great. Uh, what is a phantom poo? Well, there's two types of phantoms. There's the phantom and then there's the full phantom. So a phantom poo is when you take a, take a big shit and it goes under the thing. Like without flushing, it's been removed from the bowl. It's oh, gone. so it's it like a party trick. So it's, it's a floater gone. that has, has descended and then mm. floated up the other side. Yes. That's a phantom. 
Yeah. Full Phantom? You want to know what Full Phantom is? I'm going to oh, – okay. I don't know. Hit me. Full Phantom is you go for the wipe, nothing. Oh, a clean snap. So you don't you don't even know what happened. You don't even know if you did. Oh, There's no so evidence. Wait, so you've it does the poo does a phantom, yeah, and the poo it's a phantom snap. Out and you go for the wipe, nothing. It's like so a, a partial phantom or just a phantom. That's a just phantom. An, an escapee, just, an escapee yeah, poo. Yeah, yeah. I don't an think es- you claim poo. any level of phantom just for wiping and being nothing. You don't get any points for that. But if it happens after a phantom, which is common, common for phantoms to be full phantoms. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if Talked there's... about that on the old pod back in the day. I wonder if there's some kind of scoring system, some international judging perhaps. You bloody hope not. It could be a professional sport. So you sit behind it's some... It's a clear... Mm. It's clear glass, so you can see the water. You can see what the phantom poo might be doing, right? And you dismount the feces from the body into the water, like a dive. There's you get marked for entry. Maybe you can do a somersault, a backflip with it. They're going to be waiting on the wipe here. Let's have a look. If if, if there's nothing on this paper, he will be the champion. <laughs> <laughs> It's like sticking the landing. Yeah, it's in gymnastics. It's, um, yeah, yeah. Look, in a weird way, I'd watch that. Can you imagine being a specialty? I don't know what you call it, a pua. It's so crude. There must be a better name for it. I mean, um, you've got professionals of pretty much everything, crude or otherwise. I reckon one of the best moves you could do is you poo a bubble and it just floats away. Yeah, or, or poo something sentient that can talk back to you. Mm, that's that, that's. that's 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 a, that's, cool. uh, that's a high degree of difficulty. Yes, I would also think. Unfortunately, not impossible. We can't rule it out. We can't. I think doing a poo that has <laughs> enough friction that it generates fire <laughs> would also be an impressive move because you got the methane there, you got the blue flame. Bloody hell. Um, it's only a matter of time because, you know, it's... Yeah, yeah, wow. Hey, so comedians, you you did your com- comedic performance before. Bravo. Yeah, well, G- Chat GPT did it. Yeah, and you performed I just it, read though. it out. You, you gave it the human element that I it did. was lacking. I tried. Saw Carl Barr on the weekend. Did you? Yeah. I think I Been asked you this question. Did he talk about his family? Yes, he did. Did he talk about his kids? Not a great deal, actually. He Does he talked have about kids? his brother. I don't know. I don't think – I'm trying to think if he talked about his kids at all. Mm. I don't think I recall. He talked about his brother a lot. Talked okay. about his mum. Okay. About his dad. Yeah. No children. Yeah, okay. He does like to – a lot of comedians are going to talk about their childhood, those formative years. It's a – it's a. there's good stuff in there, surely. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was Carl pretty Barron's good. Family I liked stuff it. was always pretty strong. Yeah, um, yeah. You liked it. Yeah, Where was it was it? good. It was at RAC Arena. RAC. Yep. Yeah. So about maybe what 14,000 people, maybe. Yeah, it'd be something like that. I don't. Or know did they it... just fill half the arena like they did for CK? I didn't go to CK, but the yeah, you stage did. was. Did I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> See, this is one of those situations where I Why don't I talk about memory, something. Um, I don't, we went not, and saw Louis C.K. around this time last year. With, at, with your brother and, yep, and your yep, other brother. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, Everyone was there. Yeah, okay. Whole crew. It didn't, I don't really remember anything from that, really, any takeaways. Right, but it was, it was sort of only half the arena field and then the other side was because the stage was in the middle of what you would call or just on the other side of the basketball court. So there was a bunch of empty seats behind. Oh, this was a sellout. Stage. And yeah, it's but his biggest it's, show ever. That's fantastic. Well, that's what he said anyway. He probably just says that every night. <laughs> Get people fired up. No, he he seemed confident. I don't <laughs> think he was lying to us. My mate went to see Akmal, this Indian. Do you know the Indian? Yeah, 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 yeah. Comedian. I don't know. I've come across him before. He said he completely bombed. Really? Not one laugh. Whoa. 
Yeah, and he started making light of it as you do, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm, you know, Sid pointed out he was just oh, it's pretty hectic. Pointed out he wasn't doing very well. Yeah, that's pretty hectic, but I guess that happens, man. Yeah, I think Norm talks about how he doesn't, he never knows if he's bombing or not. Like he never knows. I haven't seen any of Norm's stand up. A lot of people haven't. They see a lot of his um, TV appearances and podcasts and stuff, but not a lot of his stand up. He didn't do a lot of um, specials that. Um, not that I've seen anyway. His jokes are sort of designed to bomb though, right? Yes. So he's immune because he wins either way, basically. Can't lose. Yeah, his bombs his jokes bomb so hard that They're funny. They're funny, yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty standard. Sometimes I don't even know. I don't even get his jokes. I'm like, wow, then I like then sometimes the more I think about it, the better it gets. Sometimes if you don't understand a norm joke, I think it's because we're not Like you're not paying attention to what he's saying because he's very smart, but he doesn't, he doesn't come off as very smart, but he is. Mm, It's a bit like Ali G. Not really, not really. Ali G is pretty overt. (laughs) Yes, yes, but he is, he's very, he's very smart, but it's the way he's, um, I guess, the way he's coming across, yeah, to the, the person is interviewing. Mm. I do that kind of thing a lot, even with you on this. I'll say things that I don't believe, but I'm trying to I'm trying to get some kind of reaction. Yeah, of course. Of course, that's gonna happen too. I Usually should lean, when you in, I should lean into that a little bit more. But sometimes I don't like saying things because see the good thing about Ali G is he's committing to being a character. So he's acting. So he can say whatever he wants because he's acting. I kind of still feel like I have to stand by my comments a little bit. Well, I mean, it totally depends on what you're saying. I need to do a Trump. Because sometimes people say shit. Sometimes people say shit and there's no joke there. It's not a joke. Like whatever they're saying, the, the gag's not a gag. It's just hurtful. You're saying hurtful things or whatever it is to get a reaction, which you will get because there's no joke. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll try and I'll try and say something hurtful at some point. It's not about, it's not about being hurtful. It's about you want to commit to a joke, right? So one of my rules was for a while that I used to have is I'd never say – um, that was a joke. The words just kidding, right? Deleted it. Yeah. I deleted it from my brain. Yeah. Because I'd rather just stare at someone, say something really weird, and then nod after it <laughs> and really sell it, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, nah, it's fine. Like, that's what I, this is, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. And if they, if they want to seek clarification, just double down. Double it. Okay. I'll keep and that say, in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, say weird shit. Weird shit's great. Yeah, that's one thing, one good thing about uh, being an, an, an avatar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really think about that. I don't really think about that. Do you think about you know you don't think about that you just said earlier how you you feel like you have to be true to yourself right yeah no a little be bit but honest. yeah yeah but I'd, I'd almost prefer to be um yeah a bit more out there even yeah just say but things we're not I don't even put a joke side on, on whenever we're going nuts we're just going no, nuts no, it's fine no, no no well look did you hear Snoop Dogg gave up smoking no that is big news. Did but it really? was it bullshit? It was about a week ago, so it was just after I got off what, from like the episode last November, week. For the rest of November, maybe? Well, there, he posted something on Instagram or whatever. I only came not came across it on Instagram, just came across the, the news article. Sure. And he was claiming to be giving up smoking, which seemed to me to be a complete lie. Look, it's, if, if he is, if he is, and if he is, doctor's orders, whatever the situation is, great. Like huge, I think it great was news. Related to that. Yeah, great news. I mean, we're not. We're, none of us are young anymore. 
So he posted on Instagram and X, after much conversation and conversation with my family, I've decided to give up smoke. Please mm-hmm. respect my privacy at this time. <laughs> please respect my privacy at, the t- at this time is like when someone dies really close to you and you go, please, please just respect my privacy. I'm trying to deal with this. He's, yeah. he's having the death of a good friend. He's dealing with the death of a very good friend of his. His ne- real name is Calvin Broadus. Yeah. I didn't know that. What, you thought his name was Snoop? I and don't his know. Name was I don't know. Probably, yeah. I don't With really two thought G's. about it. Yeah. Why okay. couldn't he be Snoop Dogg? Well, I don't know. Is Dog a popular surname? There's crazier names than that. But yeah, people change their name to whatever. He's like a personality. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Fair enough. His, his, his legal name is probably Snoop Dogg. So this was 10 days ago, but there's no update. Seven well, days that's ago. that's because people are warned. respecting his privacy. Yeah, but they're not actually going to do that. Of course not. They'll have people outside his house like looking at all of the exhaust yeah, points it, being it, like, it, where's the smoke coming out? And this is only going to con- create more controversy. No, no, no. But if he is doing it and he's doing it for like, like you know, any reason, doesn't matter what the reason is, good on him. And he said that he talked to his family. Good on him. That's That's pretty good. And last time I spoke to you, I've just realised that the SpaceX launch, Starship 2. Yeah, did you watch it? Not live. I did. It was it was at a really good time of the night and I was just ready I for can't it. Remember, I can't remember what I did. I missed it, but I watched it um, very soon after. Yeah. Hey, was that good? Can you break it down for me? Because uh, I just watched it live, so I haven't looked at anything after that or anything, any of the reports of how the mission went or whatever. I don't know anything. It was regarded as a success, but it didn't do everything that they wanted it to do. When did they, did they lose it? What happened? Yeah, so it did a very successful launch in terms yeah. of lift All the off. raptors worked, all the things went. All 33 raptors were working. Apparently in practice, they weren't able to get all the rockets firing, but they never actually launched it. So I don't understand what that means, but they couldn't get them all working together. So I think it was quite nice that they were all fully operational. Yes. They did a stage separation. So the main super heavy booster did a some kind of it's not just a when it separates it's a there's propulsion in that it's like a it's like a mini explosion happens when they separate stage one and stage two i don't know what it's called yeah yeah there 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 be a word for them but it's a separator and they have jets on them or so like not jets but some sort of explosive on them that push them away from the craft to, to yes. safely jettison things off, and this was different because um, the first time they launched, the first mm. launch didn't had a different mechanism of stage separation, which didn't work. So this time, as far as I understand, they had this new stage You're talking separation about the flippy. technique. No, no, this is separating stage one from stage two. Yes. Okay. So, so this isn't when launch, it, this isn't when it fucked up the first time. So the first time it didn't separate. There was no yeah. stage separation, lost the whole thing. Yeah, did, yeah, did the flippies. Yeah, did do flippies and mm-hmm. blew up. Yeah. This time there was a clean separation. So com- as a complete, that's really what they were going for. That's successful launch, I believe. And what they wanted stage two to do. Yeah. So it started firing its rockets for a while. They wanted that to almost reach outer space. I think it was going to about 90 Ks and it was going to start dipping back in and it was going to do a re-entry because they wanted to see what happens to the spacecraft in a re-entry scenario. Great. And the booster itself, once it separated, completed a flippy, a a scheduled flippy, an intentional Mm. flip Mm. to orientate itself because it's designed to be fully reusable. So it has to return to Earth like all its other boosters do on the falcon 9 and things like that so it started it's did its flip it started orientating itself but i think although i haven't read any reports their initial reaction was it's something it seemed to start jettisoning some kind of fluid from it about five or ten seconds before the whole thing went up and geez did it go up wow huge explosion you obviously saw that no you did not see the explosion no, because I didn't even watch it re-enter. Oh, okay. Well, stage, so the booster mm. exploded. The stage 
one, the, the, yes, the second stage that was flying up and doing its re-entry, they just lost that at some point. And I don't know exactly what happened. The, uh, you couldn't see the explosion of that. The boost is way bigger and got way more fuel and stuff in it than the, the second stage. I don't actually know what happened in the second stage. You only get the explosion for stage one. Yes. Aliens, um, probably. Yeah, maybe they didn't didn't like seeing all that progress pew, pew, we're pew. making. <laughs> it, it's, Don't come it was, back. Don't come it's back. It's pretty to the moon. exciting, though. It's pretty yeah. exciting because it's, it? it's progress. Yeah. Yeah. So, how many more of these do you need before you know? As I said, the Falcon Nine rockets—they're so dialed in because you know, just the computer just does it. Once the computer knows how to do it, the computer just does it. It just executes. So they've had over, well, last I heard, over 200 successful booster returns. So that's just a foregone conclusion for that. It took, yeah, they had the first couple blew up. I think the first five were unsuccessful. Once we, well, once we get bit, over You'd be a bit worried if the first four worked and then they said, right, get on. And they're like, are you going to test it more? And they're like, four out of four, don't think so. Jump in. Yeah, we're supposed to be going on the moon in, or we're supposed to be doing the fly by the moon end of next year. And Apophis is coming in 2029 to potentially wipe us out, so we haven't got much time to get off this rock is all I'm saying. Yeah, and they're saying that they might be able to get the third well, – I think they call it – I think they're just chucking on a number at the end of each one, so Starship oh, 3. Good. Oh, wow, the new one. Or at least the third one. They reckon they can get that up before the end of the year. <laughs> Because they're envir- uh, they dealt with the, the environmental with, like, concerns. The tonnage? No, oh, sorry, sorry. Well, it's the same. It's the same tonnage. I should say it's just the third attempt at this rocket. So they're, oh, they're going for the third they wanna, attempt. They're going to go for the third attempt before the year's out. Yeah, they don't so, have a lot of time. And this is how you dial it in. So the first one, right? They it had massive environmental concerns. Yeah, uh, they blew apart the launch pad completely. Uh, and so now they've got that big shower head mechanism where it sprays up water just before the launch starts. Smart. And one of the biggest successes coming from this launch is the launch pad survived. Yeah, huge. So you can, you, you know, uh, you've got survived the, the previous there. one as well, right? No, it got, it got ripped apart. In the first test? The first one got destroyed. Really? And they weren't yeah. using the water stuff the first time? They didn't use the water stuff the first Are time. Are you that sure? Was, yeah, wow, yeah. I thought yeah, they were using the water that, stuff that, for ages. No, that was, a, that was a response because all the dust and everything got kicked up from that first launch and the fuck they blew apart the launch pad is they had to figure out, they're like, geez, oh, we need a mechanism to actually mitigate this. And that's what they did. They were practicing. This is the first launch they've done with that. You know, they, they tested it with something, but they, this is the first launch they've done. Yeah, wow. Amazing. So now we can watch one a month, maybe. What, a launch a month? Maybe, yeah. You reckon they're going to get into some sort of like uh, consistent launch sort of uh, cycle? Yeah, a bit like Virgin Galactic are doing monthly um, suborbital flights, commercial suborbital flights now. Mm. I think they had a month off, but now they just do it monthly. They've got it dialed in. Wow. Okay, apparently they're targeting early, so SpaceX is – are targeting early 2024 for its third test flight. A couple of months or a few months, up to four months. Yeah, well, Musk says it'll be ready in three to four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Hey, so I, uh, I popped your watch on. Oh, yeah. I think it's pretty invasive. But I, yeah. I, I knew it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, you pop it right. on and it's, yeah. you know, you set up the watch from scratch and it's like, hey, I want access to your phone. I want access to your text messages. I want access to your um, location, a Wi-Fi, please. And you're just giving it all away. You know, you're just like, yeah, take it all. Um, and I don't even know what the program's called. What's it called? What, the Garmin app? Yeah, what's it called? Connect. Yeah, Garmin Connect, yes. But it's just connect, right? Yeah. Um, so I've got a, I've got like a heart rate m- reading here. Yeah, what do you um, see? But here? I don't have a resting or a high. Oh, okay. So it probably needs more data. Oh, wait. It does need oh, wait, some of these things do need time. Oh, here it is. 
It says, so because I've just popped on the watch like an hour ago, it thinks I'm like doing really good, by the way. Like my body batteries are looking amazing for this time of the night. Yeah, okay. What are you on? 55? Yeah, okay. I'm on 62, which is actually unusually high. 62? Yeah. Um, stress. Have you got any stress going? Can we compare uh, apps? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you stress. Got any stress? I've got oh, 67 my- stresses. I'm on 11. 11? Yeah, that this is unusually slow. Uh, low, sorry, because I've had one minute of high today, five minutes of medium, 28 minutes of low, 15 hours, 35 minutes of rest. Okay, so I don't have any rest data. That's probably why it's so stressed out. Um, it doesn't know anything about – like because I only just put it on. I don't think it knows – what I'm doing. Yeah, give it time. I've had – this seems bullshit to me. I've had some stress. I've got a new watch, by the way, because I got the new watch. Yes, got, to give me this one. Yeah, so I don't actually know. This thing, like I don't know why my body battery is so high from what it normally is and my stress is unusually low. I mean, I had a very stressful moment at work today, so I don't know why. I had – well, it's got – so so it's got only – hang on, 39 plus 11 minutes – uh, that's 50 minutes of data. It's got 50 minutes on me, right? Oh, is that it's all it's got? <laughs> it's got 50 minutes and it's like high, high stress, 11 minutes, medium stress, 34 minutes, low stress, five minutes. Yeah, give it some time to dial that in because it's all relative as well. It's all algorithms and it's relative to what your baseline is. I think. And it's got a resting and a high heart rate there as well. What's your current heart rate? 77. Yeah, I'm 73. 76. Seems, seems about right. Seems about right. Yeah. Do you trust Garmin with your data? Uh, no. I trust Garmin. I don't trust the hackers. You know Garmin got, <laughs> got hacked. So about two or three years ago, yeah. the Garmin app went went dead. It Basically, you couldn't, couldn't do anything and everyone was like, yeah. oh, what's going on? There's a bit of an outage. Garmin paid 10 mil to the hackers to get access again, to, to just to fuck them off. Yeah, yeah. There is talk of making that illegal to pay the hackers because obviously you're just encouraging yeah. them, right? You're just saying, "Here's ten million. Spend three of that on some new equipment. Upgrade all your shit, and you should be able to get way more." Yeah. So, incident of the week. This is a this cybersecurity hub website, and I like it. They have an incident of the week. Garmin pays ten mil to ransomware hackers who rendered systems useless. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Scary. But I mean, I've been hacked a million times before. So, you know, Optus, I got I got done in the Optus hack. Yeah. I got done in the Latitude 20 hack. Yep. There's a lot of my information out there on the, getting done. On the dark web. Yeah. 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 Did you watch any of the World Cup cricket final? I didn't. I watched bits of it. Wait, wait, did I? So this is India versus yeah, Australia. Well, we were talking about um, it last week we in the lead up. About it. Yeah, I know, but we weren't we, we we weren't that excited. Not really. Um, I think I might have had it had it on in the background, maybe. Yeah. Did you watch it? <laughs> yeah, I did. But for some reason, I have trouble like getting around the Aussies. Oh yeah, you don't like them a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I think they're pretty easy to hate unless you're Australian. It, yeah, I don't think you really know. Do you think fan. you would have felt that way if you were an old man in the 2000s era? Uh, uh, that way about the Australian cricket team? Yeah, if you were just like Ah, oh, Brett Lee, hate him. No, I think they, they were. I think they were. They were so <laughs> dominant. I think it's a bit different. They were so dominant that. Uh, Bradley was okay. You know, Glenn yeah, McGrath, must, Shane Warne, uh, I don't think you can hate yeah. those guys too much. Yeah. Like Langer was a good bloke. Hayden was a bit of a bully. Yeah. But what I liked is there was 130,000 Indians just going ape shit. And there was about – I, I wanted their celebrations and their excitement to continue. Yeah. You wanted them to win. I wanted them to win. I wanted the home team to win. Yeah. There were like 16 Aussies there. Yeah, and apparently it was just silent in the arena when it was going bad. Yeah, so it just ruined the vibe. Yeah, 
I reckon Those 16 bloody party Aussies. poopers, like the Australian cricket team, bunch of party poopers, is that what we're saying? Yeah. I mean, they should have shown some respect for the fans of the game. Well, you can't throw the game if you're going to show respect. Oh, right? you could. You can't throw it. You could. Well, you could. Well, you should. Yeah. yeah. Is that what we're Go saying? Far. I think they should have. I think they yes. should have thrown it. Yeah. Do the right thing. <laughs> but the whole game in jeopardy, yeah, I, I, I like it. I think the Indians should have been allowed to bowl tamper. Get one back on the Aussies. Oh, what? Bowl tamper. Oh, ball tamper. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Do that uh, move where you go to bowl and then you just stump them. Do that one. Oh, I've been man-catting. Um, yeah. Do some Bairsto stuff, you know. Do the old just throw it at the wickets from the, from the, from the keeping position and just hit them. How many Indians do you think live in Australia? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I believe it's Maybe. around a mil. Yeah. Okay. Of our 25. Okay. Which is pretty... Just pluck that out of thin air, that, that stat? No, I, I, quite I, happy after, with that? I, I was looking into it at one stage because mm. uh, I, I don't, I just don't know if that's right. Uh, but it's, I know it's, it's decent. It's decent. Well, what's your point? Oh, well, I, I thought it may be the 16 Aussies in the crowd. Um, was probably representative of our respective population. So you got 130,000 Indians, right? 16 Aussies. I probably reckon that's probably about right. Pretty close, yeah. All right, we'll go with that. I don't know what 25 mil is to a billion. Well, it's pretty easy to work out. I think it's one it's in times four 40. times ten. Yeah, forty. Okay. So what's 16 times forty? Yeah, we're not quite there, are we? We're only at half. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not even. Um, we watched the other finals. The World Cup happened. Australia won. Spoilers. And then we watched the League of Legends finals on the weekend. You were very mm. excited about it. You were mm. you were very pumped about it. Another spoiler. Um, T1 win worlds. T1 won worlds, correct. And Faker cements his legacy as the greatest of all time. I don't think anyone will dispute that. There's daylight to number two. Yeah. Absolute daylight. You wouldn't even know who did to put it. in there. Yeah, he did it. So he's got to be the oldest champion ever, uh, most likely. And what's he? Twenty? I think we figured this out, but I 29. don't know if it's twenty nine or twenty seven. Because I looked it up again because I thought it was twenty nine, and then I looked it up again and I thought it wasn't twenty nine. Nineteen ninety six. He was born. He's twenty seven. Oh. oh my god! And he's yeah, old. He's twenty seven, and he's old. He's an old man. But he's won the world championship four times. Yeah, but he's, you know, two feet in the grave. And he hasn't done it for seven years. So did he win the world? Did he, when did he start? So his playing career, it says 2013 to present. He was well known as like a, the best solo cure in the world, meaning he didn't have a squad of five. He would just queue into ranked and he was the best. He was the absolute best. Apparently the only reason he started playing – no, he was playing normals. Yeah, he originally would only play normals. He didn't even play ranked. But he had to wait so long for a normal game because he was – he'd just right. beaten everyone. He just because, absolutely no, Because his sh- ELO is so high and your yes. ELO would be something yes. akin to your skill level. They're trying to match you with people of your skill level and yes. boom. He had to wait so long. Game. He started playing ranked on the back of that. He just liked playing with his mates. Well, then he, uh, yeah, he became the greatest League of Legends player ever. Um, it was good. We, you and me, we get pretty pumped for the opening ceremony of League Worlds. I get really pumped for it because it's usually a technological spectacle. Yes. There's usually a bit of fun stuff going on for the tech nerds out there. And I was there for it. 100% there for it. What was it this year? You had like a like a, a group of people all singing, I guess, either the same song or their own League of Legends world song and they did a big medley together, mm. uh, dancing, backup dancing, and then this dude comes out in a suit and starts singing what you told me was the main song of Worlds. Oh, well, they have one each year. Belting it out. Yeah, yeah. And then I think it was a group of 
people came on the stage and started dancing and there was some augmented reality kind of people dancing as well. So the people who were there in the stadium wouldn't have seen these digital avatars dancing on the stage, but the cameras uh, are, are getting that Capturing information. Capturing it live. Yeah, they're getting The cameras live. are moving and and it still looks still getting the perspective good, yeah. like, like they're actually there. Yeah, and it's they on had the a screens. huge lead wall behind as well. No, it wasn't yeah, on the screen. Oh, yeah, no, well, yeah, it would be on the screens. See the, yeah, if they were the showing that bit yeah. at that time, yes. Yeah. I believe but, they do um, because it's all been when live they, rendered. Yeah, live rendered. And it looks better because they've done it before. They did it with the dragon that the one The dragon year. coming into Worlds was a cool one. Yep. It was like kind of flew into the stadium and flew around itself. and everyone was going, oh, my God, but uh, they couldn't see anything. This one but, had a massive Mordekaiser in the middle yeah, of the crowd. Yeah, in the audience. <laughs> and Mordekaiser's a big guy who holds, what does he hold? Big staff? Oh, yeah, it's like a huge staff. Or a hammer? It's a hammer or something. Anyway, yeah, yeah. so he's in the crowd with this, and he's massive. Like he's the size of a three-story building, and he's picking up his hammer, and there's a character on the stage who's apparently going to fight him, I guess. Um and I remember Leona, she's a League of Legends character as well. She has a sword and a shield. She came out with her sword. He had her shield already in his hand. And there was this like, oh, she's going to, he's going to give her the shield or she's going to give him the sword. Mm. And she plonks the sword down in the middle of the stage. And I thought, oh, fuck, that's cool. If he picks up that sword. Yeah. Then it's a physical thing. It's it's actually transitioning there. from the digital to the yeah the real and and when they they place it there in front of him and he's looking at the sword or he's pretending to look at it. Uh, there's nothing there. He's just looking at nothing. And then they do this cutaway to all these I don't know photos or something. They just start snapping all these photos and I'm like oh this is heaps of time. They've got so much time to run a sword out there and plonk it in. And I remember that break just kept going and going because when you when you fake something like that, you want it to be quick, just to just to fuck with people. Like get it, put the put the cutaway up and boom, get the sword in. Even get it to come out of the deck of the of the um, of, get it to come out of the floor. Yeah, you could make that transition happen immediately, way faster. So yeah. when it kept going, I went, oh my god, this is like so much time. Someone's just walked it out there, hot dog in hand, just headset on. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And then they cut back and boom, he picks up the sword and goes to fight Mordekaiser or some shit. Pretty there cool. No, there was no real fight, was there? Kind of just nah, all. it was just like a showdown. Out. He just stared at him and he stared back at him and there was a big, big old fashioned stare down. Is that that sets the scene? I was really pumped at that point. The games that followed were a little bit anticlimactic. Yeah, the games not for the home, were a bit not rough. for the home yeah. crowd, but yeah, the so the Korean, South Korean, it was in South Korea. There was a South Korean team that had made it in. It was versing a Chinese team. Yeah, and the scenes of because originally in the semifinals there was only there was three Chinese teams, and the last team to qualify was a South Korean team. Just slipped in there. Yeah, and there was a bloke who we saw during the telecast who was having a bit of a cry in a good way, saying, I'm just so happy because a South Korean team made it to the final and it's in our backyard and the whole mood of the whole city has gone up because we're in. Yes. And then they got to do the reverse of the Cricket World Cup and actually win the home final, which is huge, obviously. The games, yeah, could have been better, but they did it. Yeah, it was it was the a dominant performance. The games were pretty one-sided, yes. Yeah. Yes. Which you don't Faker really see. I do the, love these. a good – I love late game. I actually really like it when almost the decisions people start making mm. with the teleports, the, the, almost the macro gameplay. Yeah, and there's a psychological component as well. Like when you're beating someone down, like there was a guy who we talked about on the show called The Shy. He got absolutely dominated in one of the games. And what they do is if you're down early and then you're like behind – they punish you. Yeah, they punish you. You're an easy target. You're an easy target. You're weak. You're the weak link in the yeah. team. Yeah. So they just rub your face in the mud. Yeah, and they kind of have to, otherwise they're giving up a competitive edge. And at the pro level, you can't give up a competitive edge. Um, amazing. Loved it. That was good fun. 
Yeah, I, I wish he pulled out of Velcos, but you know, yeah. it was pretty much game your five. standard. Look. What was it? What did he play? What did Faker play? Let's just try and think about it from uh, our memory banks. Faker, he played a, did he get on his ear in the end? I think he did. No. They, someone okay, else did. Sorry, they, they banned it. Sorry, Weibo banned it the first two times because you can't Fakers. let Faker have his ear. And yeah. then they, they let it go through the ban phase in game three and they picked it up first pick. Yes. So, so he denial. played. who did he play in the first game? He played in... Did he, he played Ari in the first game. He played Ari, AP Ari. And then Silas. And then in the last game he played, I just had it a second ago. Now it's gone. Akali. Yes, yes, okay. Yep. So Silas was the one in the middle. He steals ults because they wanted to steal Mordekaiser's ult, which they kept doing. Not Mordekaiser, um, Malkai's ult. And they kept stealing it and using it. It was great. Faker didn't dominate any of those games, but he actually doesn't. He can dominate, but sometimes he recognizes when he needs to play a more supportive role for the team. And totally. He's, You're he's talking about a good. solo cure, the best solo cure in the world. And then he's been playing on teams for like five or six years now, or 10 now, if you want to take 2013 to now is 10 years. Um, he has to learn how to play with as a team. Otherwise, mm. he can't win championships and he's won championships. So the proof's in the pudding. And um, he. He's very good at absorbing the pressure and not mm. dying. So he gets a lot of attention because he is so dominant. So teams have strategies and game plans coming in, how to deal with him. Yeah, they got to tag him essentially like in AFL terms. So you'd be like, all right, put two blokes on him. Yeah, and you I was know. saying that he's got the stat for the most ganked player of all time. Yeah, <laughs> which they just sort of equated to him just playing the most games. <laughs> And who said knows, he played the most. Has games, he played the most? He, the most. Yeah, yeah. That's you'd think so. I mean, the chances are. <laughs> yeah, I think they did say because some of the kids who are in Faker's team, even they look they look very young. Mm-hmm. They 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 haven't been playing League of Legends as long as Faker has, obviously. No. So the stats are never going to stack up in favor of any of these these young bucks. Um, and there was that one kid, um, they pronounced it Zeus, right? Yeah. But it's Zeus, right? It's just spelled Zeus, but he, I think it's Zeus is how he, they say it, the commentators, and maybe himself. Yeah, for whatever reason, yeah. And he was just running top lane, tarping up the shy, and it must have been pretty crazy for him because, like, he's playing on a team with Faker. He's a young lad, but he's the he's obviously good enough to be on the best team. Um, but it's just some young kid. I'm trying to find out how old he is. I've been playing league for like <clears throat> over 10 years. How do you yeah. reckon I'd go against um, Zeus? Maybe just maybe in the mid lane. He would ragdoll you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. ragdoll you. It would but be I'm an, a master. It would be a I'm, joke. I'm, I'm, I've, got the, uh, I've got the badge Mate, for you could, like expert or whatever. Whatever the, whatever the thing is when you become an, an expert. I What's reckon he thing? could not pick items and he'd beat you. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. They're that good. They're obviously. It's it's scary stuff. I wouldn't go there. Hey, I saw something that was really cool by that Andrew Callahan guy, the old oh, gas yeah. no breaks fellow. Yes. I didn't know what he was up to, and I don't know if I think his channel is now called. So his previous channel was all gas no breaks. Now it's Channel Five with Andrew Callahan. That's it. I just saw one about San Francisco. It was fascinating. Yeah, it goes for like forty eight minutes. It's a full like. Full long form. Yeah, piece it was of quite informative. Now. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty He's brutal. Interview, interviewing homeless guys. Yeah, the first two minutes or so are pretty pretty crazy. He caught a like car jack. Someone just saw, yeah, instantly they just see a car jack, and you know people yeah, just on camera smoking shit. He's, in he's running along interviewing the victim who's chasing yeah. his car. Yeah, as it's and been then got on the night, and then got on the nightly news because he was chasing the guy, asking him what's going on. The guy's jacked his car. I think he was an Uber driver. He's gone in to deliver the food. He's left his car running and someone's just gone in and got it, taken off with it. They were driving in the wrong direction. Yeah, they were just reversing down the street at high speed. Um, Yeah, yeah, Andrew's doing stuff again. Because I've heard that it's a bit of a zombie apocalypse in San Fran, but I didn't really know the extent or the truth behind it. Sure, but we're not going to learn 
everything from Channel 5 and we're not going to no, learn no, everything from insight. the other things. No, but you're, like seeing, you're seeing people on the ground. Like it's actually – it's not just – it's not a headline or – I'm not no, saying it's, it's just not people biased. talking, yeah. Yeah. It's like, so you actually get to see some footage of what's actually going on. Sure. But in it, one part like of San every Fran. media is um, crafted. Like a documentary is crafted. Yeah, 100%. He's still doing 100%. his craft. Yeah, but um, yeah, he interviews um, – so you get – some different people, like you got uh, some people that help homeless people. Um, he interviews some uh, security or police. Um, so you get a few different perspectives. Yeah, he can curate it any way he wants, but the reality is those conversations still happened. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what they were saying um, is they are talking about the tech companies that are pulling out of San Fran and they, and by analogy, talk about how it's the same way the car companies were pulling out from Detroit. Yeah, fair enough. So saying that some of the, at least, you know, this example they gave, someone gave, is that this one company had four buildings in San Fran and now they only have one floor. Yep. And that downsizing after COVID, right, even at my work, we, we've we lost way more people that work from home and we're not a tech company. Mm, Imagine how much more the COVID work from home, um, sort of the ability to to have meetings on teams and things like that would have affect tech companies. Absolutely it would. And so Absolutely it would, someone though. gave some stats. They were saying that it's not just um, poor people doing uh, drugs in, in, in San Fran. Like it's not just, it's not just homeless people. I don't know. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, people have been, I believe some of them moved there, but they're saying 73, this was the stat someone gave that they did some statistics, who knows if they're bullshit or not. They're saying 73% of the homeless people were previously employed, uh, janitors and things, all, the, all those type of people that support the the, the businesses that were previously yeah. running from these buildings sure. and there's just no jobs anymore because like yeah. for every job that's created in there, you know, someone – who lives there and, and goes to the city and works and whatnot, they have all that spin-off, spin-off work created um, by them just being there. But um, they just live elsewhere and, you know, dial in. Of course. I'd like to see where San Fran ends up. Um, well, it depends on how bad it gets, I guess. Yeah. As in, if the tech companies continue to move out, they have a similar thing to Detroit. It was yeah, pretty bad. I've never seen Detroit in its heyday, so I only know rubbish Detroit. When was its heyday? Like when all the Ford, like when all the factories uh, were there yeah, making I guess cars. Was like they were building I'm cars. Say there. like sixties, seventies. Yeah, that's a guess. Yeah, before our time. Yes. Damn, I, want, I want to watch some more. And not by much, though. And, um, you know, let's not forget that in the grand scheme of time, you know, aren't we closer to the pyramids? No, we're closer to fucking Cleopatra. We're as close to Cleopatra in the timeline as Cleopatra is to the pyramids. Yeah, stuff like that. That's fucking weird. I don't know why that came into my head. But that is fucking weird. Okay, so this is the one, uh, the one thing I was looking at a few weeks ago that I've never talked about that I think is appropriate now. Okay, so we've done the We Repeat Ourselves convo from earlier and now we're following through. Jeez, it only took us an hour to get to this point. Okay, we're here. Yeah, and I have a proposition. For me? Yes. Should I say yes? For the world. Oh, you can yes. tell me once I've gone through a proposition these for examples. The world. Yeah, you can tell me whether my proposition will be um, is, is correct or whether you agree with it. And it is that when they, future people, look back through the Annals of history. The annals, yes. The annals. They'll be focused on Western Australia's human-made wonders. They'll be calling them the best of the best. The human-made wonders? Are you yes, talking, the human, are you talking, human made wonders of WA. You're probably wondering what I'm talking about. A little bit. But um, are you talking about wonders as in wonders of the world? Like are we talking um, yes, great yes. pyramids? Are we talk equivalent, all the equivalent of that stuff. We're going to be talking about Babylon. WA, like they talk about the seven 
wonders, human-made wonders of the ancient world or whatever they are, they're going to be looking back at WA and saying they had it all. That they Their efforts have surpassed that of the ancient wonders. Well, there are modern wonders of the world. The yeah, Hoover but, Dam. You know, but in the future. You want to add some more or do you, yeah, want to, do you want to get rid of them? When they look back through the annals of history. Yes, these are the ones they'll remember. Oh boy. Let the me just bell pull tower. up the, let me just okay, let me just put, yeah yeah yeah. Let me just pull up the modern ones of the world so I can compare what we're yep. dealing with here. Number 1, go for it. Okay, we got the bell tower. Have you Great. been to the bell tower? Uh, yes. Have you? Oh. Have you been in well, it? I've I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. Have you been in it though? I haven't, but I know Neither what's I. in there. There's a bell in there. A bell, big bell. Okay, it houses the 12 bells from London London St. Martin in the Fields Church. Great. We got them, do we? Along with the Anzac Bell. That's another one. That's 13 bells. 13 bells. Uh, it's regarded as mm. the largest, one of the largest musical instruments in the world. Apparently these St. Martin in the Fields bells were originally cast sometime before the 14th century. Got it. And the Anzac Bell was the largest of its kind ever made in Australia and was cast in Perth. And we've got it. We've got it. And that shit's on. Well, that's just one thing. It's that's cons- one thing. We have, let's just say it, let's just say it's the largest musical instrument in the world, all right? Let's just say it. Can we say that? Well, it's considered one of, so we can say it, right? Because we're oh, talking about it. it's considered one of them. Yeah. yeah. And, well, you know, yes. it's, and we've got bells in it that are like, you know, four times as old as Australia. Right. Exactly. So it's a, big, it's a big deal. Now you want it's to a compare huge that. Deal. So now let's compare that to the wonder of the ancient world. What are we up against? No, sorry, I got rid of the ancient world because that's not fair. We're doing the new seven wonders of the world. Yeah, but if we want compar- for comparative, purposes, we're doing it for comparison. Yeah. Okay. Well, how does that stack up against something like Chichen Itza? It fucks. It destroys it. it my opinion. Does. Yeah, largest, probably does. Largest musical instrument in the world. Have you got what's any more? Chich- what's Chichen Itza done for me lately? It's pretty old. It's not that old. All right, we'll focus on the WA ones to prove my point. Yes, okay. but we that's got interesting. One? Yeah, okay. We have the WA Bula Badip Museum. Wow, we got that as well, do we? Yeah, we do. We do. And you like that one, do you? Well, look, if I, it sounds more impressive if I read what it says here. This monumental project incorporated five heritage buildings that need to be restored and stitched together. Uh, it had more than 3,300 workers involved in its construction. How many workers were involved in the, in the um, Great Wall of China? Oh, thousands. I think even more. It'll be, it's such an obscene number. Okay, so 300,000 soldiers and 500,000 common people. That's how many it costs? Because do you know every family had to send their oldest born son to work on the Great Wall? Makes sense. And 100,000 people. All right, how many people died? Well, some experts estimated it was 20% of the country's population, nearly 1 million people back in the day. Yeah, work began in the 7th century BC and continued for two millennia. That's 2,000 years of building. We just can't fathom those kinds of numbers. No, we can't. But what I'm saying is the Boulevard is right up there. It says here, one of the most significant museum redevelopments in the world. Wow. I didn't know that. Again, because it's one of the most, let's just go that extra step further and let's just say it's the most significant museum redevelopment in the world. Uh, Arguably it is. Arguably it is. I think it is. Yep. Okay, number three. What are we up against? What's the second? Great Wall of China. Okay, great. Comparative, comparative. Okay, rock art, the Burrup Peninsula. The Burrup Peninsula, I don't know where that is. Where's that? Yep. I think that's up north, up north of Broome. Yeah. I think that's the Barrett Peninsula. Yep. It has more rock art at the one site than any other place in the world. Wow. Being dated back to the last ice age, it's five times older than Egypt's pyramids. 
that that is that is a good one, isn't it? It's a that good is, one. That is. It's a good. good one. What are we up against? What are we comparing that to? Uh, Petra. This is the ancient city of Petra in Jordan. Rubbish, rubbish. Throw it out. Yeah, Don't. And final scene of the Indiana Jones and the Raid and the the uh, the Last Crusade. Ah, not important. Get to the Barbara yeah. Peninsula. Yep. Get up there. Okay, number four, the Bustleton Jetty. Oh, jeez. What a wonder. Officially the yep. longest timber yep. pile jetty in the yep. Southern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, of which 20% of the world's population lives. Shh, shh, shh. Right. No, no, and all the best stuff's down here, obviously. And it's got an underwater observatory at the end of it, which is oh. one of only six in the world. Wow. I think it's just a jetty, a, a observatory at the end of a jetty. Maybe people just don't really care for them. And that shits on Machu Picchu. Is that what we're saying? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, it's one of six in the world, mate. And it's the longest timber pile jetty in the Southern Hemisphere. We probably don't in make jetties out of timber anymore. It's probably the longest in the world. Can we let's say just, that? Let, we can say that. Yeah, we can longest say that. in the world. Bustleton Jetty. Next. Okay. The Harold Holt Naval Communications Towers in Exmouth. Yeah, are we allowed to go see them? I thought they were more. Um, well, you can look at government. them from afar, but don't. you can look at them from afar. Yeah, but and they're and they are impressive to look at, aren't they? Three hundred and eighty-seven meters tall. Yeah, that is pretty tall. The most powerful transmission station in the southern hemisphere, but in the world, in the world. <laughs> and so, what's yep. that up against? Christ the Redeemer. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then Great. we've got the Golden Pipeline. I didn't know it was called this. Wow, I didn't know that either. But it was an ambitious 560-kilometre pipeline from Mundaring Weir to Kalgoorlie, considered a scheme of madness by the yes. naysayers. Yes. It was built 120 years ago. Now the epic length of steel pipe carries billions of litres of waters annually. Okay, I don't really have any – I don't know how that compares to other pipes, but let's just pretend – The biggest, the best in the world. decent. Yeah, we have to talk yep. it up somehow. Yep. They said we couldn't do it. That's the point. They right. said it couldn't be done. Yes, that is impressive. But we did it. Yes. So the Colosseum, by comparison, was is a building in Rome. It was built in the first century by order of Emperor Vespasian, right? It's a feat of engineering, they're saying. Yeah, but can it transport water? No, it's just an amphitheater and features a complex system of vaults. Probably and they probably the thought in. they could do it. They could probably just do it again. They probably had multiple Colosseums and that's just the one that's left over. Are there any big numbers in the the thing about the uh, the Mundaring, the Golden Trail thing, the, the Golden, golden pipes? Pipeline? Um, is, there any, is there any big numbers that you can read out? What, volumes of water? Something, um, just something, a big number. Only big numbers? Let me give you some numbers on it. Because I'm going to give you some numbers about the Colosseum, but I want numbers the bigger we can the compare, better. Because it is an apples, apples to apples comparison as exactly. well. Pipelines to exactly, Colosseum. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, give me, you give me a stat first. Okay. Um, Well, it's 189 metres by 156 metres. This is 8,000 kilometres. See, that's way more, just as Wait, a that, starting that's point. That's not right. Yeah, just as a starting point. Like, that's way better, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but I'm um, sorry, I'm having trouble because it, it, it tails off. I'm on Google and it's like, but thanks to the 8,000 kilometres leading dot, dot, dot. So I don't even know. And then when Just, I click on it, it, well, it won't let me It should be on the in. Wikipedia page, right? Yeah. But the that, pipeline continues to operate today, supplying water to over 100,000 people. Look at that. Pipeline. Okay. How many people fit in the Colosseum? 50,000. Oh, see? That's what I'm talking about. Double it. Double it. Double it. Mate. It's bigger, double the people, right? Twice yeah. as many people are as affected. However, okay, here we go. According to some estimates, about 500,000 people died in the Colosseum. Whereas this one, the Goldfields Water Supply Scheme, just supplied water to 100,000 people in 33,000 households, as well as mines, farmers, and other enterprises. So when you talk about killing half a million people or 
giving water to a hundred. I think we can see what the the more wondrous thing is of the two. I don't know if you know, oh well, but I mean, let's not look. The, the Colosseum isn't the only infrastructure that can kill people. Yes, because see why O'Connor killed yes, himself because he thought it was a failure. Yes, we've talked about this on the show before. Yes, yes, he didn't see any water come out the other side. Got very upset about it. And then didn't get to see that the next day or something it started flowing. Yeah. It worked. Yeah, he was so overwhelmed. With, he was devastated, yeah. Yeah, and that is, that is actually a really sad story. That is super sad. And that one sad story lands far more, far bigger than, you know, the gladiator story, any other bullshit coming out of the Coliseum. Yeah, Russell Crowe. Easy. See you next Tuesday anyway, isn't he? Whoa. Oh, I didn't think so. He's all right. <laughs> He's great. He's great. Okay, Lake Argyle. Wow. Are we doing lakes as well? Lakes can be wonders? Well, it's technically not a lake. Oh, so it's man-made. It's an inland sea. Uh, but that, that is it man-made? It is classified as an inland sea. Yeah, but that, uh, inland sea is man-made? I don't know what that means, but well, it's classified. <laughs> If we did it, because you can't have lakes or inland seas. I don't think they go, what are you doing? You're trying to bring a lake in here. And they're like, no, 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 it's an inland sea. It's an inland sea. Right. Well, keep going then. I'm sure it'll stack up beautifully against the Taj Mahal. It's actually huge. Lake Argyle is absolutely huge. Yeah. And there's one entry point for boats onto it. So you can, what, you can go on it? Yeah, you can go on it. There's a swimming event there. I've swum Isn't in Lake it, Argyle. Is, are we talking about the same thing? Because you, you haven't described this Argyle thing know. at all, or it's wonder. But is it pink? No, no, no. It's just it's just a lake. It's just a this man-made. This isn't the pink water lake? It is not. It is not. It's up in Kununurra, and if you look at it on Google Maps, it is ginormous, mm-hmm. 18 times more capacity than Sydney Harbour. Yep, yep. They love using that. How many football fields is that, roughly? <laughs> Football fields. That's how they do it, football fields. Um, yeah, and what? Are you saying this is man-made? Because I don't know if it is. Lake, Lake Argyle is, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, actually, when they were making the rubble to – they had to blow up stuff, right, to make rubble to dam it up, right? Apparently, the one of the explosions they did to generate some of the rubble was the second biggest explosion outside of nuclear explosions on the earth. Yeah, like um, that first one was in World War One or Two, where they laid charges all throughout the um, the lines and they set it off. And they that we talked about it on the podcast a long time ago, that it was the biggest non-nuclear explosion ever at the time. Yes. Well, because I didn't think they even had nukes at the time. But um, – they, the, the the commander was quoted as saying something like, well, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we are definitely going to change the landscape. And that's what they were doing here as well by the sounds of it. Um, I've got a new rule as well. Mm, Can good. I just quickly – we're going to have a fine jar and I'm going to enforce it. Great. If we ever say – we've said this on the show before. But I, I think that's fine. No, I just don't even want to say it. I don't want to know about it. It's fine. It's fine, but we're going to talk about everything before, really, at the end of the day. If someone yeah. calls, you know. yeah, 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 yeah. So what's what's this like? Someone, someone, some astute listener might go, "I'm going to go back and find the first time they talked about that, and then they'll go back in time." There's, there's no cool. astute listeners. There's no astute wow. listeners. Wow. Okay, so this, what have we got up against something that's 18 times bigger than Sydney Harbour's capacity? What have we got? What have we got up? Yeah. What are we up? What's the <clears throat> the equivalent? Oh, Taj Mahal. I mean, that's ugly as sin. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. That's going to be knocked down. That's not going to stand the test of time. Yeah. It was built in the, what was it? Um, it was to honour um, the wife of the emperor who died in 1631 giving birth to their 14th child. It took 22 years and 20,000 workers to construct the complex. Um, nah, 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 nah. See, look, the thing about it is it's inconveniently located. Apparently you have to travel for like an hour or two out of somewhere to get there. I mean, Lake Argyle is just right very there accessible. next to Kununurra. It's right very there. Very accessible. Yeah. It's about, I mean, what, 7,000 kilometres away from the closest major city? It's only a small flight from the nearest town. I mean, it's... It's massive. What are we talking here? It's 200, it's 500-odd it's Ks from Darwin. 
it's thousands of kilometers from per- from Perth. WA is a very big place. Isn't so, it? Well, so far we're seven from seven in terms of when you're comparing like for like. It's not fair like. though. It's yeah. not fair though because we're there's such more. a big state. WA's got more. But what I'm saying is we've got, we got such a big state that it's not fair to compare us to the rest of the world because we're so big. Of course there's great stuff in there. It's so big. You think just probability-wise? Probability-wise. Yeah. Look at the land size. WA well, is bigger we, than the majority of countries on earth. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We're embarrassing the, the world again and again, and now we bar- embarrass Australia because we've got mainland Australia's tallest lighthouse, Cape Lewin Lighthouse. Yeah, it's a wonder. Lighthouse of Alexandria, you can pop that in the bin. Okay, let's see. How big was the Lighthouse of Ale- Alexandria? Oh, it would have been a couple of hundred metres. Let me let me have a look at that. Yeah, have a quick look. And they do know how big it was because I'm pretty sure it did it did live enough to a point where I think obviously the first historian sort of looked at it. Constructed between 284 and 246 BC, height. 103 metres to 118 metres, so somewhere in the middle. Uh, what was it, sorry? 119. We'll give it the benefit of the doubt. 118 metres. Okay, okay. Well, this only has 186 steps apparently, so I'm quite worried about its height. Well, we didn't need the step oh, count. I don't think we can go. It's only 39 metres. What are you talking about? Cape Lewin Lighthouse. Yeah, I bet the Lighthouse of Alexandria is an ancient wonder of the world. Oh, yeah, they probably actually don't really know how tall it is either. I mean, that's just a guess. Well, it says between 103 and 118. They're pretty firm on that. Mm, Yeah, but did it have 186 steps? Because that's like an important number, so some would say. (laughs) It's 100 years old as well. Imagine, yeah, we could, yeah. Anyway, it's impressive. It's impressive. Let's just. It's one of the best. It's one of the best lighthouses going. Okay, we got the Wellington Dam mural in Collie, 8,000 square metres of dam wall, big mega mural. No other dam side mural comes close to the size of this one, making it the largest of its kind in the world. Okay, that is pretty exciting. So... What you're saying is bin all the wonders because it's just out, it's just outside. Oh, which wonders? All of them. Just bin them all. Put them in the bin. Well, because yeah. WA has got it on lockdown. And yeah, that this is the proposition that when they look back through the annals of history, they're going to be yes. looking at Western Australia's human-made wonders as the best of the best because we wow. have the yep. largest dam mural in the world. We have the largest lighthouse in mainland Australia. We have a lake that's 18 times bigger than Sydney Harbour's capacity. We've got the Golden Pipeline murdering Good luck people. Catching any of this. Like catching We've got the up. most powerful transmission station huh? in the world. In the Wait, world. In the world. We've got the longest timber pole jetty in Not the world. Not even close. Yep, not the, even close. We've got the peninsula, well, just an area with more rock art than any other place in the world. In the world. Back to five times as old as Egypt's pyramids. In the world. In the world. The most significant museum redevelopment. Ever. In the world. Of all time. That's yep. maybe. <laughs> and we have the largest <laughs> musical instrument. In the world. In the world. <laughs> So what what don't we have? How is tourism not Out popular? Of problems is that what you're talking about? How, why aren't people just rushing? Yeah, day day one, bell tower, tick. Day two, museum, tick. You know what we're we need to do? We're, we're on day three, and we've seen two of the most nah, amazing fuck em, things fuck in the whole world. We're, we're not going to let them in anymore. Keeping it, we can close this state off as well. We've done it before. We'll do it again. Wow, you want to go that road? Yeah. yeah. What do you think the people here are going to appreciate? We're not I think called that's something the hermit we're famously state. bad at. <laughs> we're not called the hermit state for nothing. That's right. They're jealous, <laughs> and we're going to have we're going to be the home of the longest podcast in the world. Well, the world record for long, or, or do you mean what are you talking about? 
Yeah, actually, I was talking about the world record, the, the longest podcast, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All we have to do is 57 hours unless we don't do it quick enough and someone else does it and then we have to do whatever the fuck they did. Oh, Plus, gee, we need to do it soon, hey? That's what I mean, man. Like, But I, I, I think you're completely underestimating how hard this is. I think it will be the hardest thing you ever did. Bro, someone cooked for 100 hours. I know, but I think they would have practiced for it. All I'm saying is we actually – we only need to do 55 and a half hours right now. I know, know what I'm saying. I know. I know how it works. I'm just uh, – w- would you be happy with 55 hours? Would you want to do 56, 57, 60, get that crack 60? I, I could know. clear my schedule. We get, we get to clear a month for that shit, man. I reckon we I should need, do it spontaneously as well. I need years to recover. <laughs> no, I reckon we just go for it. Look, there's a – I'm I, like you seem pretty keen. I think I could do it. I'm not saying it's easy. No, but what percentage, like, if if I was keen, would you do it? Yeah, all we have to do is commit. Well, well, so it's on me then. Uh, okay, well, not 100%. Because no, well, I've not- got to say, I'm a 50-50 at best. Meaning, like, if you flipped a coin and you said, if it's heads, I'm keen, and tails, I'm not keen. Jeez. And I flipped a coin and said, if it's heads, I'm keen, and tails, I'm not keen, and we both landed on heads, we're doing it. That's how I feel about it. So if you flip a coin and uh, it's yeah. on heads, I flip a coin, it's on heads, yeah. and we're doing yeah. it. Yeah. <sighs> Look, I get let's, a coin? Okay, but would you believe me? I'll, I'll be truthful. Oh, I don't have a coin on me. I'll be truthful. I can flip your coin. Okay, all right. You trust me. Yeah, I trust you. Okay. Just, just be honest, because to be honest, of if course. we do even get two heads, know, we probably won't do it anyway. But it, it could be a sign. I'm going to flip the first coin. This is Let, going to be, end the episode this be mine on. or your coin. Uh, make it mine. All right, we'll flip a coin to decide who goes first. No, it doesn't matter. You're first. This is your coin. I'm flipping it. Yeah. All right. It's tails. Okay. Well, that's. Now that just means you're not keen. I'm going to flip my coin. Okay, that was a no roll. It fell on the floor. <laughs> Honestly, doing another one. It's heads. So you're keen. So we got I'm head, not keen. Wow, we, we got so heads switched. In the yeah, look, I'm keen. I think we should do it. We honestly, we need to do it now. These records are only going to get more and more impossible. This is your chance. I'm never going to set a world record for anything. This yeah, is man. this is jam, this is money for jam. I'm just saying. Again, not easy comparing it to all the other world records, like longest toenails and shit. You know, people have all those really long toenails and long fingernails. I'm well, never going to be I said that person. If I'm keen and you're keen, we'll do it. Yeah. Well, I've flipped the coin. We we'll just heads. have to set up with snacks. No, so I'm keen. You're keen, so it's on me now. Now it's on you now. Uh, I'll think about it. It'll be some right. homework. All right. Homework but, for uh, next week. week. I get to flip the coin again. Until until we're both keen. <laughs> Um, now we could we could actually do it. Here's what I'd want to do if we were going to do it, right? Yeah. I'd want um, I'd want six or seven people ready to go to help us. Yeah. A guest yes. would come in. Yeah. Okay. For a, like, let's just say they can come in for a couple of hours if they want. Yeah. Okay. Or a few hours yeah. if they want. Yeah. Minimum one hour, and we need seven people who can provide us a minimum of one hour. And I think we know seven people who can do that. Yeah. Who'd be keen. Mm. And if they want to hang around and help us, as in if they uh if they're two hours in and they're still going and they're happy and whatnot, hey, you stay for as long as you want. Because we we're out to, here yeah, for sixty yeah, hours yeah. to get just me and you. Yeah. So I'm not saying I'd get sick of you. Yeah. I'm not sick of you. But sixty hours, it could be our last episode ever. Well, we'd definitely repeat some things. Oh, yeah. We talk about some things we've talked about before. Anyway, we need to wrap this up. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we'll but do it because we'll, we're not doing the 60-hour podcast now. So We're, we're just talking it. about it. Yeah. Unless about you it. want to start it now. You said you wanted to be spontaneous. Yeah, well, we could just start now. We're sort of halfway there. We could just there. keep going, keep recording. We are halfway there, aren't we? No, we're, we're no, not really. No, but we're getting closer is what I'm saying. Oh, we're getting close with every second, but oh, no, yeah. we're not doing it now. The longer it goes, we'll see the harder time. it is to stop. I mean, we're going to stop. Hit us up on the email. If you want us to do the world record, just give us a bit of encouragement. We'll probably do it. 